This kid has no legs, but can cross you up and drain three-pointers. This is JoJo Hayes, and he's not the only player we gotta talk about. Like, this kid who dominates high school basketball with no hands or feet. This pro player with dwarfism that can easily break your ankles. Or the 7 foot 5, 15 year old girl that dropped 62 points in her championship game. And those are just a few of the 12 unbelievable players I gotta show you. And first, there's a basketball player with no arms. See, when Jamarion Stiles was born, he caught a rare infection that caused him to lose most of his arms. So growing up wasn't easy, especially cause he had dreams of being a hooper, but not even his friends believed in him. They'll start picking teams and I would be the only one left out. And then they'll just tell me, just go home and stuff. You can break someone's heart like that. But all that rejection only fueled him. And by the time he was 12, he was so good that he made his middle school basketball team. Cause this kid learned how to dribble, pass, and most importantly, shoot. And on March 31st, 2017, he got his shot to play in a game and nailed it. He made that look easy. But this next player is making D1 look easy. Cause he's on his way to take over the NBA with only one hand. See, when Hansel Emanuel was only six, he ended up losing his left arm in a freak accident. But that didn't stop him from pursuing the sport that he loved. So with the help of his dad, who played professional basketball, Hansel learned to hoop with only one arm. And when his family moved to Florida, he got the opportunity to play in a real high school league where he started dropping players with one-armed crossovers, hitting jump shots from anywhere on the court, and dunking on players' heads. It was unbelievable, and the world agreed, because this kid turned into a star overnight, gaining 1.6 million Instagram followers. And after three years of hooping in high school, Ansel got a D1 scholarship to play for Northwestern State University. And on December 10th, 2022, he scored his first college points. Into the front court, Emmanuel. He'll drive in, lays it up, and there's the first points of the career of Hansel Emanuel. But nowadays, Hansel's got his eyes set on the NBA, where he'd become the first one-armed player to ever make the league. He don't want people to see him, oh, the guy that only had one hand. He want to play in the NBA. He don't have no fear on the court. He can be the first player in the league playing with one arm. I believe in him and I believe he can do that. Man, that dude's an inspiration. But look, what if I told you there's a seven foot, 400 pound monster that's playing in college basketball? Meet Connor Williams, AKA Big Cozy. And he plays for St. John Fisher University in New York. But despite being built like a truck, the kid can hoop. Cause this dude can make passes, bully other players in the key, and sink three pointers. So in his first game in 2021, he instantly went viral with this play. Well, yeah, that's a, it's a problem of being good, right? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Getting non-conference games, nobody wants to play it. Yep. And the big guy Williams hits the tur hits the floor there. And rolled his ankle. Yeah, he's grimacing, you can tell. But he'll make the nice pass for the dunk and the foul to Cook. And since then, life's only been uphill. He's got 45,000 followers on Insta, he's still hooping, and he's even got his own trading card. That man is living large. But there's a team from New York that doesn't care about size. I'm talking about the greatest team in dwarf basketball history. See, in New York, there's a basketball team for adults with an average player height of four feet called the New York Towers. And their team is stacked. They got lightning quick Justin Tompkins at point guard, sharpshooter John Horton, and they'd be nothing without their starting big man. Four foot five, Blaze Foster leading the Towers to three straight Dwarf Association titles. These guys were like the Chicago Bulls of little people, but it's no surprise they're so good, cause their star player was their biggest baller, Manny Love, a four foot five demon who had division two college offers and made grown men look silly. In fact, Manny was so good, he signed with the Harlem Globetrotters, making him the smallest person to ever play professional basketball. I'm one of the best basketball players in the world. 
that's why I'm a Harlem Globetrotter. Yeah, that man right there is the goat of dwarf basketball. But look, something's going on out in China, cause there's a little girl that's bullying everyone. This is Zhang Ziyu, a seven foot five beast who is only 15 years old and she's been destroying Chinese basketball. I mean, she makes it look like she's playing on a kid's hoop, but not only that, she's over two feet taller than all of her opponents. So when she goes to shoot, no one can even come close to blocking her. And even if she misses, she'll get her own rebound until she makes it, which is exactly why she's been averaging 35 points per game and even once dropped 62 points in her league's finals. Yeah, that girl's a cheat code, and so is this next player, cause Darnell Rogers, the smallest player in D1 history, is absolutely terrorizing the league. See, this dude is a 5 foot 2, 150 pound point guard, and normally a person that short would have a hard time competing, but Darnell was different, cause in high school, he figured out that being short could have some advantages. Being so low to the ground, it allowed him to make passes the defense couldn't reach. He's sneaky to get steals, and his dribbles were so low, no one could take the ball from him. So Darnell made his opponents look stupid, scoring multiple 40 point games, and leading his high school to back to back championships. So UMBC offered him their starting point guard spot, and not only did he lead the team in scoring, but he became the shortest player in D1 basketball history. You're averaging 9.3 points per game, but the thing that we just saw there is everybody came in. Little man, you're five foot two. So when you see opponents on the court for the first time, how do they react when they see you? When when they lace up with us, I mean they gotta guard me just like I gotta guard them. So it's gonna be a tough matchup for them. I know it's tough when they gotta guard somebody like me that's fast and quick. And, you know I can do everything. So this I, man gets buckets. Look at him. Five two. Look at him. A floater off the backboard. He is Floater. averaging 14 tonight, friends. He's a lefty, too. That's cool. Wow. Maybe a little. Size doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this. You, you just look at it. <laughs> yeah, he's a bite sized baller. But there's a lot more incredible athletes coming up, like JoJo, who with no legs can cross people up. And he's not the only one who can hoop without legs, because this is Josiah, and his shot is so good, he can hit buzzer beaters like this. And we'll get to all that and much more. But first, we gotta talk about our sponsor, Game Time. The cheapest and safest way to get sports tickets. Cause if you find cheaper tickets than Game Time, they will literally give you 110% of the difference to buy any tickets you want. So you'll get the cheapest tickets guaranteed. They got tickets for sports, music, comedy, and so much more. And if you're like me, worried about getting bad seats cause of how cheap the tickets are, don't worry. Cause Game Time has the best feature ever. You can check the view from any seat in the venue, so you can pick the best seats for the best prices with no hidden fees. Game Time is famous for having the best last minute tickets out there, and since they also offer the cheapest tickets possible, it's a no brainer. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code REBOUND for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code REBOUND for $20 off. Download Game Time today for last minute tickets at the lowest price, guaranteed. But now, we gotta talk about the Michael Jordan of wheelchair basketball. See, when Patrick Anderson was a kid, he loved hockey, hanging out with his friends, and playing sports. But when he was just nine years old, something horrifying happened. When I was nine years old, I was hit by a car, and I lost both my legs below the knees. And in losing my legs, I lost my independence, I lost sports, I lost hockey. It was a really hard time. Patrick hit rock bottom. His dreams of ever playing any sports were ripped away. Or at least that's what he thought. Cause just a year after the accident, Patrick was introduced to wheelchair basketball and he immediately fell in love. And I remember that day very vividly. I saw basketballs lying on the court and a little mini basketball hoop. And so I leaned over in my wheelchair and I picked up a basketball and I put it on my lap and I wheeled over the basket and I took a shot. So I grabbed the ball and I did a little loop and I went in and hit another shot. I mean, that was it. I was hooked. After 10 years of practicing and competing in local leagues, Patrick got so good. One of the best wheelchair basketball schools in the world, the University of Illinois, gave him a wheelchair basketball scholarship, where he became a star. 
But after four years, Patrick had his sights set on something bigger, the Canadian national team. And in 2000, they offered him a starting spot on the team to compete in the Olympics. Patrick knew he wasn't going to waste the opportunity of a lifetime. So over the next few years, he balled out dropping crazy passes, hitting threes, and averaging a ridiculous 21 points a game. That is more points than Kobe, LeBron, or MJ averaged in any Olympics. And Patrick continued to dominate his entire career, winning gold medals in 2000, 2004, and 2012, and becoming the greatest wheelchair basketball player of all time. But look, we gotta talk about the player that has no hands and no feet. This is Landis Sims, and because he was born without fully formed limbs, people told him that being an athlete was impossible. But Landis didn't listen. He wanted to play basketball, so he got prosthetic legs, learned to catch with no hands, and after years of practicing, figured out a way to shoot so well, he ended up making his high school's basketball team. But it was obvious he wasn't going to make it to the NBA, so Landis decided to play baseball. And he got so good, the San Diego Padres signed him to a one-day contract. I'm excited to have you here with us. I know you have a special relationship with Joe Musgrove. You said you're a pretty good pitcher. We could use a little help with pitching. Right. So we'd love to sign you to a contract here with the Padres. This is the same uniform player contract that Joe Musgrove signed, that all the players signed. So you're officially going to be a major league Padres player. How does that sound? Sounds amazing. Awesome. Sign right here. To sign a contract with the Padres, it really just means everything to me. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome to the Padres. Thank you. I think I'm, you know, back in the league, out of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> but he is not the only one going pro, because Kevin Grow is the only player with Down syndrome that's signed to the NBA. See, Kevin has a disorder that causes developmental delays, but that didn't stop him from becoming a GOAT, because he spent years practicing on his own until he made it to his high school team. And eventually, Kevin even got the chance to play in a real game, where he shocked the world. This was the greatest game ever played by someone with Down syndrome, because he dropped 14 points, including three three-pointers, and he even hit a buzzer beater. This clip instantly went viral, and eventually, it caught the eye of an NBA team. Cause just a few days later, the 76ers reached out, asking Kevin if he wanted to sign a two-day contract. So, Kevin immediately jumped at the opportunity. He joined the team pregame tonight, his custom jersey waiting for him in the locker. He stood side by side with his new teammates. Powerful moment as the team huddled around him. But this right here, this is what it's all about. It's much bigger than basketball. The team has really embraced him yesterday at practice. Today at the game, and just moments ago, Kevin Groh coming out with the entire Ben Salem High School basketball team. Man, he's probably a better sixer than Ben Simmons. But look, what if I told you that some players are dominating with no legs? Yeah, this is Josiah Johnson, and he was born without legs. So growing up, he was constantly told all the things he couldn't do. He couldn't play basketball, and he'll never make it on a basketball team. I mean, it was fair to be skeptical. How could someone with no legs possibly play in a sport that's all about using your legs? Well, at first, Josiah listened to all the haters. He thought maybe he wasn't cut out to be on an able-bodied team, and he decided to play wheelchair basketball instead. But after dominating in his local wheelchair league, it was obvious that Josiah was different, so he decided his only option was to play basketball like everyone else. Yeah, Josiah practiced moving around the court with his arms, shooting from the ground, and working on his ball handling. By the time he reached 8th grade, Josiah was ready to go out for his school's basketball team, and that's when he proved everyone wrong. Still, Josiah knew making the team was a long shot. Fortunately though, Josiah turned out to be pretty good at long shots. He made the team on his merits. Yeah, Josiah didn't make the team because the coaches felt bad. He made it because he was actually talented. And with him being so low to the ground, opponents have called Josiah a nightmare on defense due to his ability to poke the ball away, while his teammates compared him to Steph. Because in his first game ever, he did this. It was the end of the game, seconds remaining. Josiah shoots from three. And again, his disability disappeared. 
But Josiah's not the only player with no legs making a name for themselves. Meet the Hooper with no legs, who's better at basketball than you, Jojo Hayes. See, when Jojo was just a one-year-old kid, he almost didn't make it, cause he was diagnosed with meningitis, a disease that causes inflammation around the legs and works his way up the body. And it got so bad, doctors thought Jojo wouldn't survive, so they had no choice but to perform a last-second operation. And while they ended up saving his life, they had to take both of his legs in the process. But even though Jojo would never walk again, by the time he turned five, he fell in love with basketball. And as he got older, he decided that, since he still had his hands, he'd figure out a way to go out and hoop. So he practiced for hours, just shooting from all over the court, working on his technique. And when he was home, he practiced dribbling around the living room. And it turns out, Jojo became a three-point sniper. Cause during halftime of a University of Illinois game, Jojo got the chance to play five on five. And with over 10,000 people watching, something magical happened. I hit a three during halftime at a college basketball game. <laughs> and it went viral. I saw it on YouTube. Get it, Jojo! <laughs> He had the crowd roaring. I feel like Giannis or Steph Curry. Ah, yes. There you go, <laughs> Bro's doing more with no legs than I am with two. Now look, while both Josiah and Jojo grew up without legs, there's a basketball player who lost their legs at the age of 33, but did not let that stop him from playing basketball. See, on May 2nd, 2021, AJ Davis was on top of the world. He was playing for the Columbus Condors, a minor league team in Ohio, and he'd been balling out, dropping 29 points in his last game with hopes of going back overseas to play or even catching the eye of an NBA scout. But just three days after his big game, AJ was heading home to drop his daughter off when he noticed a homeless man on the side of the road asking for food. So he pulled over and started digging through his groceries, trying to help the dude out when out of nowhere, car struck AJ from behind. 911, what's the location of your emergency? Oh, on Hamilton Road, it's not me. Uh, there's an accident and somebody, uh, it looked like uh, his uh, legs are really broke. A month later, AJ finally woke up in the hospital after being in a coma. Doctors immediately surrounded AJ's bed, where they gave him the worst news of his life. Despite doing everything they could, AJ's legs were so severely broken, doctors had no choice but to amputate both of them. I want to carry that pain and anger, but then if I carry that, that'll be stopping my blessings or what he has planned for me. So I'm not going to hold that burden on me and stop what he has next for me. So I'll just continue to live my life. Yeah, I don't have to let my, my, my physical legs, but I'll get artificial legs to get me back rolling. So it's a process I have to go through, but I'll get through it. But despite missing both of his legs, AJ had one thing on his mind, getting back on the court. And just two months after the accident, AJ made his return. His spirits have not wavered. The positivity has not wavered. Having to be in a coma for what was over a month and doctors to save his life ended up having to amputate both legs. But AJ Davis so glad to be here and we are so glad he's here as well. AJ went from losing his legs to being back on the court in just two months. But his story is bigger than basketball, because despite everything that happened to him, AJ holds no hate in his heart. You could talk to her, what would you tell her? There's no pain in my heart towards you. I don't hold anything against you. Like, yeah, the situation did change my life, but there's no grudge or anything that I'm holding or hate towards you. 